Hey everyone, this amazing ESO Network show is brought to you by our fine sponsor, Amazon.com. Please remember to shop Amazon for all your geeky needs, no matter what time of the year it is. All you need to do is go to ESOPodcast.com slash ESO Amazon. Or click on the Amazon banner on the ESO Network webpage to go to our e-store. It's the best way to shop and the best way to support this program, and it doesn't cost you anything extra. Okay, that's enough of me babbling for now. Now on with your regular scheduled show. Are you ready to roll? This is where the world of pop culture and talk collide. I'm fine now. I'm not scared anymore. The tall man just wants to play. This is the Adam and JP Show. It's the Creepy Tuesday edition of the Adam and JP Show. Is that official now? Is that what we have here? Yeah, well, I mean, you know. <laughs> for a while. For now, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's the last episode, really, of 20. 20- 16. That's true. This is it. Going to end on the creepy note. It's been a year of creepies. We have, I mean, a lot of Halloween coverage. We had the clown, clown again in 2016. Mm-hmm. Clown watch, I guess we called Are it. Are you again? <laughs> I'm clown again. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, we're going to end on the creepy note. It's fine. Uh, and hopefully this will continue into season seven. Yeah. Season seven. Season seven? Is that what we're doing? Yeah. We're doing seasons now? Season seven of the Adam and JP wow. show. I don't know if it's going to work. Available now. On iTunes, <laughs> Stitcher Radio. Uh, go to our iTunes page. Uh-huh. You can pull it up on your phone. Uh, pull it up on your laptop. Just go to iTunes, search Adam and JP Show. Hopefully that's how you listen now. Or, or Stitcher. Not everyone has an iPhone or an Stitcher, iDevice. I'm going to be honest with you. Stitcher's kind of crappy. It doesn't sound good. No, it doesn't sound yeah. good. It's w- way more compressed yeah. than, say, an iTunes or an iHeartRadio yeah, right. or even a TuneIn, yeah, which yeah. are all outlets that you can find our show. Right. Even the Google what, Play Store. Oh, in good? the Google yeah. Play Store? Yeah. Yeah, we're there. Yeah. Um, I see now Spotify has podcasts. We're coming soon to Spotify. That's weird. Yeah. They're everywhere. Coming soon yeah. to Spotify. That's funny. Um, I used to listen to Stitcher religiously. It's how I listened to all my podcasts back in the day. I don't know why. When you were young and dumb. Yeah. Resuming episode. <laughs> you ever hear that? I mean, I haven't listened to that in a long time. Oh, yeah. yeah. I haven't listened to the Stitcher app in a while. Uh-uh. But if that's how you have to listen to the show. That's fine. That's fine. Maybe you have a, window, maybe you have a Nokia Lumia. <laughs> and you can only listen to your Stitcher, Stitcher app. It's possible. Hey, whatever happened years ago, you told me about a Nokia phone. Yeah, what happened? The bendable. The, it was going to be bendable and say there was a picture of sand. You'd be yeah. able to fill, actually fill the sand. What happened to that? I've I'm been gonna... looking forward to that phone forever. Wow. The latest thing about it was the uh, in October 2011, the Nokia bendable kinetic yeah. phone prototype. That's the last thing they've talked about it. So it didn't work. But there are all kinds of pictures and actual videos of it. Uh huh. A bendable phone, man. But it's so cool. Work. You don't think so? That or it would be five thousand dollars with a contract. That's true. <laughs> um. Well, this has been a fun year. Yeah. For the Adam and JP show, right? We've grown a lot. Yeah. Uh, in audience and mm. as people, I think. Yeah. <laughs> <It's>, yeah. <laughs> a lot of things have happened. Maybe you've learned something. A lot of things have. Maybe uh, you've learned a thing or two. Yeah. Um, we teased on the Friday show uh-huh. that we would actually start Creepy Tuesday with you being creepy. Right. So please, by all means, oh. let's let's go back into the Wayback Machine yeah. around 2012. Yeah, bringing it back to like 2011, 2012, we were uh, just starting on the convention scene, and we decided back then, we had a different name for the show, but our booth girls, if you want to call it that, were called show girls at the time. Right. It sounds creepy. That that alone sounds creepy. It wasn't meant to be that way. Well, the the, the show was called The Show. Yeah, and there were girls for the show, so right. hence show girls. It was completely innocent. Yeah, totally. So we'd have these girls, because we realized very quickly, we could have pins for sale, we could be showing horror movies, giving out free candy even, and people most likely won't come talk to us and realize our message of spreading the love of the Adam and JP show, what it would soon be. So we had to have uh, females at the table, and uh, sometimes that would scare people even more away, even further, because they're afraid of females. But sometimes, just sometimes, <laughs> that would bring guys over. Right. There are people over in general. Huh. It's had more of a friendly feel to it. Because we love people. Yeah, I love people. That's what I love. Um, so we, <laughs> so we had this great idea, uh, to uh, put an ad on Craigslist. We we're an up and coming uh, podcast. Looking for- Internet radio show looking for people to help us grow our brand. Uh huh. Female specifically. Right. Uh, models, attractive women. To <laughs> I don't think that was in the. I'm pretty sure it was. 
<laughs> well, you wrote it. <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, people to you know to to attract uh, customers and people and walk buyers to uh, passerbys to our table and spread the word of what we do. That's understandable. I mean, you uh-huh. go to many main conventions, even I mean, San Diego. They have they are paying people a lot of money to be booth booth babes. They call them. Yeah, PC or not, that's what they call them. That's the street lingo. Booth attendants. There you go. Booth peoples. <laughs> uh, so we had that idea to do that as well and uh, kind of. Have someone there and then grow with us and do that. And uh, the, the responses I got from Craigslist, my intentions were pure for sure. Did you get my response? No. Are you no. one of those? You didn't but get the I saw stuff. I saw it was crazy. Mm-hmm. The 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 photos I received. <laughs> wow. I didn't mean for that to happen. And right. I, we even had we set up meetings sometimes to meet people at coffee shops and and interview them face to face. And I chickened out on that because that's just creepy. Um, man, that was just a bad bad idea. So we finally get the scoop of a girl local to town here. Right. You got the scoop. Got the scoop. Because this uh, was your project. That was my project, yeah. yeah. I thought it helped us greatly. Right. And it almost did. But for a, So we had a, a local girl that was interested, showed interest. She was a friend of a friend. I didn't actually know her. Right. Uh, I, through the friend that we both know mutually, he tells her of this project we're working on. She shows major interest, apparently. Uh-huh. Major interest. She even interest. goes as far to give me a Facebook friend request for no reason. Right. Because she's so interested in this project. Uh-huh. So I'm like, well, okay, she's down. Yeah. She is down. She wants to be part of Team AJP. Yeah. Uh, Halloween well, of- Team uh, show at the time. Yeah, team show. Halloween of 2012, I suppose. We're at the local Halloween Express, which is a uh, random temporary pop-up tent with all kinds of Halloween goodies you can imagine. And lo and behold, the, the female that is the friend of the friend interested in being a showgirl works at this Halloween Express tent. Uh-huh. I'm and like, you tell me, hey. I'm, I'm with you. I'm like, wow. She's interested in helping us out. She's the one that reached out to me mm-hmm. to be a friend, so she's showing interest to do this. And I say, oh, you should go talk to her. I do. And this is where things get fuzzy. Whenever I have a bad point in my life, I try to forget it. So I almost blacked out thinking about this, but as far as I can remember, I walk up to her. Uh-huh. What did I say and do at Let's that point? just say her name's Karen. Right. Hey, Karen. Yeah, hey, Karen. I'm Adam. Yeah. I know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. You know, you're interested in helping us out? Uh-huh. 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 Hey, I'm going to go get a box. I'll be right back. <laughs> just books it. Never saw her again. Never saw her again. <laughs> it was creepy. I felt creepy like, hey, you want to uh, gonna come dress up? <laughs> I felt dirty. It didn't help this was in the Lake Avenue aisle. I was like the Larry Flint of the temporary pop-up uh, Halloween Express <laughs> shops. It was terrible. I can make you a star. <laughs> you want to be a star. No one will see it but us. <laughs> And uh, to this day, she's on my Facebook. I see her pop up every now and then. Oh, are I, you friends still? I, we are. I should take her off, shouldn't I? Because it's pretty. <laughs> no, you should message her. <laughs> hey, this is Adam. Remember, yeah. we're still waiting. But we're I mean, to totally back. clean intentions. I never meant to. You know, I, was, I, could, I could see how some people could use that in the, the negative way. But this was totally benign. Yeah, I mean, I will attest yeah. to you. This was totally benign. Yeah. But the people that you saw the I mean, I mean, it was crazy the stuff that the messages people would respond with, and they'd send me mirror shots. I'm like, I don't want to see that. Yeah, <laughs> it was crazy. And this was the only one you actually spoke to. Yeah, that was the only one. And it didn't the rest, well. like, they would reach out to us, and I would just stop responding because it was oh, creepy. I gotta go. I gotta go get a box of witch wigs. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be right back. Oh, okay. Hey, yeah. she's gonna go get some witch wigs. She'll be right back. <laughs> She'll be right back. I promise you. Uh, okay. Um, that is my creepy Tuesday beginner story. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, we, we want you to give us a Halloween gift. Okay. We're asking for a Halloween gift. Halloween gift. Or no, a Christmas <laughs> gift. <laughs> How about that too? Or, or Christmas or Halloween. Yeah. My Halloween is, or my Christmas is Halloween. Uh, uh-huh. well, yeah. It the mixes, rest of you people it celebrate mixes together. December. It does mix together. Uh, we want you to leave us a five star rating and review. Mm-hmm. That's uh, all we on, ask. On iTunes. That's all we ask. Just go to iTunes, look us up. Did I already say this on this episode? Not this episode, I don't think. If so, do it again. Yeah. <laughs> Point being, we're live. <laughs> Can I do that over? <laughs> we're live, pal. Uh, leave us a five star review. We have thousands and thousands and thousands of downloads. Yeah, not that many reviews and star ratings. Right. on iTunes. So please do us a. What I mean, what do you want from Just me? Just do it. What do I need to do? Do you want me to come to your house, wash your car? It's like the Hairley Boy ad. <laughs> Let the boy wash your cat. <laughs> All I want to do is wash your cat. <laughs> Can I come over and watch your cat? That's good. Uh, Creepy Tuesday. Yes. We last week we did uh, FEMA camps. After that episode of FEMA camps, what do you think? Uh, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. It was you infor- enjoy it. Informative for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Make you think twice about the 
Federal Emergency Management Agency? Yes, it does. Not really. <laughs> did you look up any more afterwards? Not so, I mean, for when I did that night, I did quite a bit of research that night. Yeah. I, got, I got my fill on that. And I still I still believe it to be of good intent, just some people took it the wrong way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I, I think the whole FEMA camp thing is bunk. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. Uh, we did the Georgia Guidestones. Right. The week before that. Yeah. This week, we're going to go to something that you and I both love, UFOs. All right. It's about time. One of the first documented possible UFO sightings. I want you to, go, did you, have you, That's what you have the, right now, the picture yeah. up? Uh-huh. Yeah, go ahead and pull the uh, the famous photograph up. We're, and, and, you know, if you want to follow along at home, yeah, uh, you can uh, Google the Battle of Los Angeles. Wow. And you will see a famous shot that was in the papers the day after this happened. How have I not heard of this until today? How does that work uh, it's out? It's a pretty crazy story. Yeah. And just like last week, where we had a little bit of reality mixed with a little bit of fiction that created a great conspiracy theory, mm-hmm. that's where we start in the Battle of Los Angeles. The claim is, oh, this is actually a historical part. Just weeks following the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, California was attacked by a Japanese I-17 submarine. Around 7 p.m., February 23rd, 1942, the sub emerged just off the coast north of Santa Barbara at the Elwood Oil Installation. At 7.15, the sub began firing into the fuel storage tankers. After firing between 20 and 30 heavy artillery rounds, the vessel submerged and safely traveled back to Japan. That actually happened. So that's real. That's real. That is reality. Following the bombardment of Elwood, the entire East Coast was put on high alert for incoming air or sea attacks from Japan. With the Pacific Fleet in ruins from the Pearl Harbor attack, the entire Pacific Coast was open for an attack from Japan. During the night of February 24th and early morning of February 25th, all eyes turned to the sky as air raids were sounded and spotlights circled the skies near Los Angeles. Soon, artillery shells began firing into the sky at something. For over an hour, nearly 1,500 rounds of anti-aircraft ammunition and 50 caliber machine guns fired into the sky, but no craft was ever hit. In the end, three people died from unexploded shells and bullets falling back to Earth. Three more died from heart attacks. Wow. The, this unexplained skirmish has become known as the Battle of Los Angeles. Um, a, a lot of this, I think, can be attributed to pandemonium. Yeah, it was a, a scary fear. time. Yeah. But here's, here's the story in its entirety. Uh, February 24th, around 7 p.m. on the night of the 24th, blinking lights and flares were reported around Los Angeles defense plants. These reports prompted the military to go on high alert. Air raid wardens were contacted and everyone was preparing for an air invasion. Air raid wardens were volunteers, basically, at the time. That they volunteered that when the air raids sounded, that they would gather, they would team up with other air raid wardens in their community and get everyone to safety. They would make sure that, because when this would happen, they would go to blackout, which means you had to turn off everything. Mm. Like, no lights. Because you didn't want to give any incoming um, planes targets, so if you shut down all the lights, they would be fu- you know it would just be black below them. That was the theory. Um, so this happened on the night of the twenty fourth. Air raids start going off. Uh, the reports prompted the military to go on high alert, but the alert was canceled just past ten o'clock. So at seven o'clock, blinking lights near defense plants in Los Angeles, they go on high alert. 10 o'clock, nothing's happened, and uh, they cancel the high alert. In his book, The UFO Dossier, UFOologist Kevin Randall speculates these lights to be the early work of Foo Fighters. One of the mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not those Foo Fighters. Uh, Foo Fighters were the name used by Allied pilots in WW2 to describe unidentified craft and aerial phenomenon over Europe and the Pacific. So this is early, one of the earliest documented Foo Fighter sightings. Mm-hmm. So that was all on the night of the 24th. Then we move into early morning on the 25th. Just past 2 a.m., radar began tracking a large object moving west, just about 120 miles, or it was moving east. It was just about 120 miles west of Los Angeles. By 221, a blackout was ordered for the entire area, which was about a 40-mile area around Los Angeles. Los Angeles was included in this. Air raid wardens once again called into action, and air raids began to sound throughout the region. Just past 3 a.m., searchlights seemed to focus on one object 
and anti-aircraft fire began. So they start firing off the artillery shells and the 50 caliber machine guns. This is where this photograph comes in. If you Google the Battle of Los Angeles, you see this famous black and white photograph that was taken. It was in all the papers on February 26th. It is creepy. It shows all those all the spotlights that they would have at the time that would, they would try to center in on the incoming aircraft. All these spotlights, like what, a dozen? Maybe, yeah, quite a bit. All centered on one fixed object. Right. And this is where all the... Uh, the anti-aircraft was firing on this one object. Mm. Uh, just past 3 a.m., searchlights seemed to focus on that one object, and the firing began. The firing continued for over an hour. This was all around 2, 3 a.m. Uh, later in the morning on the 25th, the Secretary of Navy, Frank Knox, held a press conference in which he stated that there was not an object or enemy plane over L.A., and that U.S. planes were not pursuing the object. He went on to say that the entire incident was a case of war nerves. The Los Angeles area newspapers that covered the story began to accuse the military of a cover-up. Witnesses clearly saw an object in U.S. warplanes over the skies of L.A. Therefore, the U.S. military was covering up the incident, but it should be remembered that the mainland of the United States had been attacked only two days earlier by the Japanese Navy Mm -hmm. when the submarine came up uh, near Elwood, California. It uh, It would have caused panic if Californians believed they were under attack by the Imperial Japanese Navy. So here's what, and at this point, everybody thinks this actually was an attack from Japan, Japan's Air Force. And uh, following World War II, Japan denied that they, they, they owned up to the other attacks that they did, mm-hmm. like the one in Elwood, California, but said they never sent planes over the coast of California uh, in February of 1942. On February 26th, Secretary of the Army Henry Stimson reported that some 15 planes at various speeds and altitudes were reported flying above the Los Angeles skies. Stimson could not specify if the craft were American or other. So now you have the Secretary of Navy going, ah, nothing, nothing happened. Everybody's just got a good case of the war nerves. And now you calm down. Yeah. And now you have the Secretary of the Army saying, oh, no, 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 there was something. We can't specify if it were, you know, if you saw American planes or Japanese planes Mm -hmm. or something totally out of this world, but there was something there. The Los Angeles Times ran a story on February 26th which chronicled the battle and included the famous photograph at the height of the battle. The published photo shows an object illuminated by eight to nine searchlights with a dozen anti-aircraft shells exploding in the sky around the object. Film footage of the height of the battle, which you can find on YouTube. Mm Mm-hmm also surfaced that month uh, in the form of a newsreel. The Battle of Los Angeles on February 25, 1942, was so compelling that the Los Angeles Times reran the story and photo on October 29, 1945. However, a Los Angeles Times article that was written in March of 2011 seems to have uncovered an ugly truth regarding the photo of the battle. Simon Elliott, a researcher at the Department of Special Collections at UCLA, uncovered the original photographs and negatives in the L.A. Times Photographic Archive, which is held at UCLA. Following extensive analysis of the collection, it's proven that the photo was retouched by the L.A. Times prior to it being published on February 26, 1942. So what they're saying is there was something there, but the L.A. Times went in and, you know, touched it up to make it a little more visible. Because, of course, uh, later on, I've, I've seen reports of it being, of course, the old weather balloon. Oh, I mean, yeah. If you Google a weather balloon, oh, there's yeah. nothing like that. Oh, just keep that thought. Because okay. that's going to come up a lot okay. as they try to explain this thing away. Uh, witness accounts. Nearly two dozen witnesses came forward following the Battle of Los Angeles to confirm that they, in fact, saw aircraft in the sky. One witness, Paul Collins, reported one large craft that seemed to be able to change trajectory, speed, and altitude at will. Now, you got to remember, this is before Roswell. Right, right. This is before the whole UFO phenomenon. Mm-hmm. So this is, that's why... It's kind of new territory at that yeah, point. I mean, it was... That's why UFOologists say this is the first real evidence that we have of UFOs. Mm-hmm. This is what they believe, that the Battle of Los Angeles was a UFO. And when you go to this witness who gave this statement before everybody was UFO crazy, says that he saw one large object that seemed to be able to change trajectory, speed, and altitude. He claims the craft suddenly disappeared from the skies. 
It was there one minute and disappeared. An extensive study of eyewitnesses' accounts of the Battle of Los Angeles discovered that dozens of people in Los Angeles, Inglewood, Long Beach, and Huntington Beach clearly saw an object in the skies over L.A. that morning. Many saw U.S. military aircraft patrolling the skies over Southern California. However, the eyewitness accounts of the object vary. Over 12 witnesses uh, accounts analyzed, the size and shape of the object do not match. Descriptions of the objects have it measuring 16 to 80 feet long, bell-shaped, oblong, and even round, and moving at 10 to 200 miles per hour. Wow. So the size and the speed vary depending upon who you talk to. But you have over two dozen people who went and said, we see something, we saw something. So here's the various theories of what actually happened during the Battle of Los Angeles. One theory is fire balloon attacks from Japan. (laughs) Uh, Between November 1944 and April 1945, the Japanese Navy launched over 9,000 fire balloons towards North America. Carried by the recently discovered Pacific jet stream, they were to sail over the Pacific Ocean and land in North America, where the Japanese hoped they would start forest fires and cause damage. And that was real. That's real. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. About 300 were reported as reaching North America, but little damage was caused. Six people, five children, and a woman became the only deaths due to enemy action uh, to occur uh, on mainland America during World War II when one of the children tampered with a bomb from a balloon near Bly, Oregon, and it, and it, it exploded. Uh, the site is marked by a stone monument at the Mitchell Recreation Area in uh, Fremont National Forest. Recently released reports by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police and the Canadian military indicate that fire balloons reached as far inland as Manitoba. A fire balloon is also considered to be a possible cause of a third fire in the Tillamook Burn. One member of the 555th Parachute Infantry Battalion died while responding to a fire in the Northwest on August 6, 1945. Uh, It was an American balloon released from Douglas Airfield in North America. They reported that one of their barrage balloons had become untethered from its uh, post in El Segundo, California, shortly after dark on February 24th at 7.18 p.m. Naval intelligence issued a warning as flares and lights had been seen near defense plants in the area. It was later revealed that Douglas was trying to find its balloon. So now you have Douglas Airfield saying, oh yeah, we had one of our uh, weather balloons that became untethered. It floated over Los Angeles. The flares and the lights that you saw early in the night, that was us trying to find it. (laughs) It's just odd. It's a lot of cover-ups. Uh, at 2.15 a.m. on the 25th, a balloon with lights was reported near Culver City by civilians, police, and military lookouts. A blackout of L.A. and surrounding areas was ordered, and the 37th Coast Artillery was ordered to fire on the balloon. Other gun batteries began to join in on the fire- firing as well. This lasted at 2.21. The head of the Douglas Airfield, realizing that the situation had escalated to an unexpected level, ordered the ceasefire. However, because of the slow communications, the firing continued. The balloon, a.k.a. the object, would continue to be seen until 3.30 a.m., and sporadic firing could be heard until 4 a.m. Here's my question. Mm -hmm. All right, let's say this is a huge, giant balloon. Huge. That escapes from El Segundo and starts heading towards Los Angeles. Though, they claim that the radar showed it moving out in the ocean towards Los Angeles, but let's just say it went one way and came back the other. Yeah. Kind of impossible, but for the sake of the argument, let's say this was just a giant weather balloon. It's always the go-to, isn't it? Over 1,500 rounds fired at this thing. Right. And clearly, (laughs) if they have it in the spotlights, and that's what's in the photograph, Mm -hmm. why didn't it fall out of the sky? Yeah, you see whether balloons, they would not withstand 1,500 rounds. Right. That's for sure. I mean, that's what what I think. Yeah. Here's the official, uh, and the official word kind of goes along with this. Officially, in 1983 a military report was released about the Battle of Los Angeles. They say a weather balloon was caught on radar. This caused a panic that led to anti-aircraft firing and searchlights. The problem was compounded by the fact that the anti-aircraft shells were caught in the searchlights and they were mistaken for enemy craft. No way. So according to the official report, it was the weather balloon from El Segundo. Uh Uh-huh. And then panic, everybody went crazy. And as they're firing at this thing, and they've got the spotlights on it, 
people are actually seeing artillery shells going towards it, they're mistaking that for more aircraft. Mm-hmm. So whether they believe it's Japanese aircraft yeah. or whatever, that's the official line. For people, I guess, I mean, that was a, a war-stricken time. People were kind of on edge. Oh, yeah. I mean, we're what? Uh, just over two months removed yeah, a few, yeah. from, um, from Pearl, Pearl Harbor. Harbor. The Pacific Fleet is in ruins because mm-hmm. it was all based in Pearl Harbor. There's nothing to defend the East Coast, basically, other than the Air Force and anti-aircraft fire. Right. So, and they were that was the fear that Japan the Japanese would attack from the West Coast. Yeah. They would fly east into the West Coast. Uh, and then you had the submarine that popped up and shot up an oil refinery. So it is valid fear that you could see some sort of air attack from Japan. Um, and, and that's what the official word is. It was fear of that compounded with an escaped weather balloon. Have you ever seen a weather balloon? No. And even if you Google the image of a weather balloon, there's no way they can be mistaken for UFO. That's always the go-to. Oh, it's a weather balloon. But look at it. Like, just Google weather balloon. There's what do you no think way. the average size of a weather balloon is? Let me check it out. I don't know. And, of course, the final theory is that it was a UFO. Right. Uh, the increase in military action worldwide caught the attention of extraterrestrials, and this was one of the first appearances by visitors from another planet on Earth. So three different size professional weather balloons are available, three feet in diameter, eight feet in diameter, and 16 feet in diameter. Not very big at all, really. All balloons are made of gray or white natural rubber. When filled with helium, the lift power of the balloons are one quarter pound, 10 ounces, and 2.42 pounds, respectively. From the science, scientificsonline.com, they say. What's the point of, of a weather balloon? What's the point of it? Uh, what well, it study the atmosphere? That's just are there things inside of the balloons, like actual. Oh, well, you have kind of think, like a, I mean, a Dorothy two thing from Twister. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. Well, you have to think in this time that is how you would study the atmosphere. Yeah. We didn't have all the technology that we have now. Right. Yeah. And that's how we got the technology that we have now. Well, we can buy weather balloons. You know this? Yeah, you can launch your own weather balloon. Wow, like Balloon Boy. Hmm. According to witnesses, six to eighty feet long. Yeah. 16 to 80 feet long. That's a pretty wide spectrum. Yeah, yeah. But some say it was 80 feet long. And and the biggest, that's crazy. And then there's the picture. Okay, let's say the LA Times did doctor the picture. Uh Uh-huh. Let's let's just, for argument's sake, they did doctor it. Yeah. That doesn't change the fact that they were, they saw something. And to be fair, that was in the 40s. How much could that have been doctored, honestly? Yeah, that's true. Really? And they used Photoshop <laughs> and put Kanye in it. Yeah. <laughs> um, so just hearing this, you're reading about it now. What's your thoughts on the Battle of Los Angeles? Um, I wouldn't say it's an alien or an alien spaceship. But I think it's something being covered up somewhere. I lean more towards it was a group of planes from Japan. Yeah flying together, which would, in the darkness, especially on, you know, the radar at that time, would look like one large object. Now, with that, no plane was ever shot down. Right. And for over an hour, they fired at something. Yeah. But I would... Lend, I would Did it just kind of hover there? Or was it flying around? I mean, that's my other question. No, see, was that's it? the thing. Like, for this 40-mile, you know, square area, yeah. you have reports of people seeing aircraft flying at mm-hmm. different altitudes, yeah. at different speeds. And then this one Paul Collins guy saying that you know, it was huge, it was oddly shaped, it flew at a weird uh, trajectory, it could change speeds, mm-hmm. it could change altitude faster than any craft did, that we had at the time. See, that's odd. And then it just disappeared. That is odd. Um, there was fallout from this, though. Mm-hmm. Like what? Well, uh, the Elwood Bombardment a couple of days before the Battle of Los Angeles, Mm -hmm. uh, almost directly led to the internment camps of Japanese Americans. Really? Mm -hmm. Really? Pearl Harbor, combined with the fact that uh, Japan is now off the coast of California in submarines firing inland, that it was shortly after the Elwood incident incident that the government started uh, opening these camps and gathering Japanese Americans. Wow. Wow. Um, The events... Of the Battle of Los Angeles. Yeah. 
mildly inspired the movie from a couple of years ago, uh-huh. Battle Los Angeles. Which I was so pumped to see that movie. Saw the previews, got hyped, got psyched. Uh-huh. When saw it opening night. It was terrible. It was really bad. It was it was really bad. Yeah. It was what, 2010? Yeah, it was shortly after or Dark Night. 2009. Maybe in 2009, because it was shortly after Dark Night. Yeah. Yeah. Might have been 2009. Cause yeah, because we were all psyched because Harvey Dent was in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's the, the greatest thing ever. <laughs> oh, this movie is terrible. I mean, my wife didn't want to go see that movie. Yeah. And I pretty much forced her it's to go see good. that movie. It's got a promise. Have I ever been wrong? Yeah, and you were. And I was. Yes, you were. I was. Also, the events of the Elwood bombardment mildly inspired the film, the Steven Spielberg movie, 1941. Uh-huh. With Dan Aykroyd and John Belushi. That's crazy. Uh-huh. And is Harold Ramis in that? Uh, I can't remember. It's been a long John time. John Candy. Yeah. John yeah. Candy's in that. Mm-hmm. Mildly inspired the film, 1941. Uh, and every year at the Fort MacArthur Museum in California, they hold a celebration and a recreation of the great L.A. air raid. What? So they get the lights out, and they've got the... No, you no, should look no, this no. up. Wow. They got, like, the big band playing, and, you know, they got the the Andrews Sisters. Wow. <laughs> or girls singing Andrews Sister songs. Yeah. <laughs> He's the boogie woogie bugle boy, a cup of baby. And then they... Uh, they fire off some artillery shells. And, Yay. And what's odd about that is they kill three people every year. <laughs> Just for tradition? For tradition. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah three people dead, uh, heart attacks out of fear. That's but crazy. Think about it, man. It's a different time. You know, that's what makes you think, though. Your your first thought is, and eh, they were just overreacting. They were afraid things would happen because of Pearl Harbor. If that were the case, you would think their first thought would be it was a uh, an aircraft from a, a, an opposing country, not it is a UFO. You know what I mean? If, you, if your brain is in that mindset... To just kind of think the the most crazy thing, or the, even the slightly craziest thing, is a new aircraft from a different country. You would believe that first over a UFO. That's what's odd to me. Well, that, that's what they believed. Yeah, they believed it was you know a Japanese attack. Only we believe UFOs. <laughs> so, like, but, people like us. I got you. Yeah, with the 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 you know the theorists uh-huh. have yeah, especially with the weird photographic evidence. Yeah, and you should watch the news the news footage. Yeah, it's kind of creepy too. Really, I'm sure. Um, yeah, I don't think a UFO. I mean, I'm I, not thinking UFO. I use the term UFO as in it's unidentified, which it is. Right. That's, that's what, true. We don't When know. I say that's what I mean. I don't, Yeah, okay. <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, yeah. UFO, yes. Yeah. Alien craft, There we go. No. There we go. That's what I'm saying. Unless you're talking about an alien from that's not from this area. Yeah. Like a craft alien to this area. Right, yeah. Then it could be an alien craft. That's possible. Space monsters. Yeah. No. <laughs> space monsters. UFO, yes. Nice space people. I think it was- Grays? Well, uh, uh, <laughs> Hmm? There was one website. Oh, boy. Here we go. And I forget the guy that was quoted. I, he's another UFOlogist. Yeah. But he believes that he has... Uh, oh, you know what? We'll take a break. I'll look this up and read this because I don't want to get this okay, wrong. Okay. Yeah, please do. But think about it. It could have been the Grays. <laughs> wow. It, it's the Grays. Oh, wow. We'll okay. talk about it. Next. The Avengers Assemble podcast from White Rocket Entertainment. Creator and fan interviews and discussion about Marvel's Avengers comics, movies, and everything else. From Van Allen Plexico and the Jarvis heads of AvengersAssemble.net, creators of the best selling assembled books and the most fanatical Avengers fans on the face of the earth. February 25th marks an anniversary that few remember and some refuse to forget. In 1942, an unidentified object was seen hovering over the California coast. The military, poised to defend the coast from a foreign invasion, took aim and fired. The event, called the Battle of Los Angeles, made headlines. What was in the sky and where did it go? Filmmaker and UFO researcher Jose Escamilla highlights the events of that night. If they can't bring down a a weather balloon with over 1,500 rounds of anti-aircraft shrapnel, 12 pounds, weaponry, what are they going to do against a real enemy target? That's what they decided. What do we do? Do we tell the American and the world public there is something among us that we cannot bring down, we cannot control, we don't know where they're from, and we don't know what they're doing here? No, they didn't want to say that. So the the next best thing to do was to just uh, officially deny their existence. That's when the first official denial on UFOs started. Battle of Los Angeles. Yeah, real deal. UFO cover-ups. Yeah. Time travelers, weather balloons, the Grays. I couldn't find the website. I want it was one that's, I looked at earlier today. That's all good. But it was a UFOologist that basically said he had befriended one of the the, the gray aliens, uh-huh. 
And uh, in the conversations, uh, the gray alien admitted that, oh, yeah, all those those UFO sightings, that was always us. Wow. Especially that one over Los Angeles. That was one of our first. Wow. Mm. He was a friend of the grays. He was a friend of the grays. It's like the neighbors next door. Yeah. You, you, know, like, you know the grays. He loved the grays. <laughs> Who doesn't love a good gray? Yeah. So. Wow. I guess, is that our last Creepy Tuesday story for? Yeah, we have the year at least. Of the year? Yeah. The last episode, yeah. Last one in 2016. So, I mean, now it's uh, it's time. I guess I've, wait, I'm married now, aren't I? Yeah, technically, uh, <laughs> you're married. Hey, congratulations. Hey, thanks for the- Mazel th- tov. Thank you. Yeah. Are you breaking dishes? That happens, right? Mm. You step on them, put them in like a, in a cloth, you, and you step on them? How do you think your wedding went? Yeah, I think it was awesome. I like the part where they put me in a big chair and, and passed me around. What? That's still all Jewish, isn't Did it? Did that happen? <laughs> uh, I don't remember doing that. <laughs> Um. So if you have some going into twenty seventeen, yeah, uh, this would be a good time in season seven of the Adam and JP show. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you love the seasons. If you would like, uh, if there's <laughs> something you would like us to cover as part of Creepy Tuesday, mm-hmm. uh, send us an email. Do it. AJP at Adam and JP. And if you want to be part of the team, send me an email. JP at Adam and JP dot com. We're looking for someone to find stories for us, not just Creepy Tuesday stories, right? But yeah. The other, you know, the other stuff that we do as well. You can be the SMG, the social media guy or gal. Yes, that's true. Mm-hmm. Uh, social media, uh, producer, uh, promotions. Hey, that we we want to do some cool stuff in 2017, and, and we've never reached out and actually, well, unless you count Showgirl, <laughs> the original creepies. We've never reached out to actually build the team. Yeah. So uh, send me an email during this little break here, JP at AdamandJP.com. We can do it. We can do it. Yeah, and it's almost Christmas time, too. Next week? Yeah. Or this week? This weekend? This weekend? It is this, this weekend. This Saturday is Christmas. It is. Christmas Eve is a Saturday. Yeah, this Sunday is Christmas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is, this. I guess, is the, yeah, I mean, this will be the last show before Christmas, the last one. So this is Christmas. We talk about it a lot, but really quickly. Favorite Christmas movie of all time. Like actual Christmas movie? Yeah, like actual Christmas movie. It's a Wonderful Life. That's your favorite one? Yeah. It's a Wonderful Life. Uh, yeah, that's my yeah. favorite. Gotcha. Yeah. I just now saw the, uh, what was it called? Christmas in the Smokies, I think, with Dolly Parton. <laughs> Is Lori Laughlin in that as well? <laughs> Maybe so. It wasn't good, but I saw it. You watched it? Yeah, yeah. It's all, it's all in its entirety on YouTube. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? My wife loves it, and I, she she recommended it. And, and your thoughts? Eh. Eh. <laughs> Have you seen it before? No, I haven't. I think it's called. Let me check on that. I'm pretty sure it's called Christmas in the Smokies. Is it like Dolly Parton's in it? Yeah, yeah. Or she's it's the main about character. Dolly Parton. She's the main character. Oh. Yep. Christmas in the Smokies. Nope, that's not it. <laughs> Is it about her? Yeah, it's you know she's you know it's Dolly Parton. Is she's... it a coat of many colors that was on last year? No. Christmas movie. With What's Dolly that? Parton. Yeah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Nine a, to five-ish. A Smoky Mountain Christmas oh, from yeah. 1986. A Smoky Mountain Christmas. Yeah, Smoky Mountain Christmas, 1986. Man. Haven't seen that. You know, I've never seen any of those Hallmark really? Christmas movies either. Starring Dolly Parton and Lee Majors. Directed <laughs> by Henry Winkler. <laughs> Originally broadcast on ABC in, in uh, December 14th, 19... Wow. December 14th, 1986. That was the original broadcast? Yeah, which we... A little behind the scenes here. Uh, it's almost exactly 30 years from right now. Oh, interesting. Actually, right, it is right now, December the 14th, 2016, as we record this. So exactly 30 years ago today, A Smoky Mountain Christmas came out. <laughs> so landmark day in TV. This day in history. Was uh, that like an NBC Sunday night movie? It, yeah, ABC, yeah. I bet if you try really hard, you can go on YouTube and find a promo for it. Here's a quickie. Country music superstar Lorna Davis, played by Dolly Parton, is overwhelmed and disillusioned by her career in loneliness. She plans a trip to a friend's cabin in Tennessee's Smoky Mountains to escape from Los Angeles and recuperate during the Christmas season. It's good. Was she there during the Battle of Los Angeles? Maybe so, yeah. Yeah. I, I beg of you, watch 10 minutes of a Smoky Mountain Christmas on YouTube. It's and, funny. And I understand that the following year, she went and started working at a club in New York yeah. and uh, met a scallywag <laughs> cab driver yeah. played by Sylvester <laughs> Stallone. <laughs> Upon arriving there at her Smoky Mountain cabin, Lorna finds it has become the impromptu home of seven orphans who are hiding from the orphanage in town. They actually discover her sleeping in one of the beds, an allusion to the seven dwarves finding Snow White, to which the youngest proclaims, 
I know who she is. She's the angel. Last paragraph here. Because they both have secrets to keep, the children don't want to be found by the orphanage, and Lorna doesn't want to be found by anyone from L.A., they agree to keep each other's presence at the cabin a secret. She then quickly builds strong friendships with each of them, although it takes a while to win over cautious Jake, the eldest child. (laughs) For a Smoky Mountain Christmas, where Dolly Parton escapes back to her Smoky Mountain cabin and holes up with seven kids. Not weird at all. <laughs> Was that the same plot of the Kenny Rogers movie Six Pack? <laughs> Maybe so. <laughs> yeah, pretty uh, good stuff. Smoky Mountain Christmas. Oh, wow. It's one of the first ones to come up. Yeah, she faces Jezebel, a mountain witch woman who's determined to kill her for attack- attracting the eye of her lover, John Jensen, played by Bo Hopkins. Hey. Mountain Dan. Wow, Lee Majors is Mountain Dan. <laughs> You can search a Smoky Mountain Christmas 1986 yeah. ABC Sunday Night Movie promo. Nice. On YouTube. There you go. I would like to hear this. Well, okay, let's do it. All right, bring it up. Tonight <laughs> on the ABC <laughs> Sunday Night Movie, she's a little bit country. <laughs> was looking for something the big city couldn't give her. Country. What she found were seven orphans who filled her life with holiday magic. We want you to be our mama. Dolly Parton, Lee Majors. Dreaming of a Smoky Mountain Christmas. A Smoky Mountain Christmas, one week from tonight. Now, back to our story. What's the story? It was the Disney Sunday movie, I don't know. Oh, wow. Yeah, it had Tinkerbell. Was it a Smoky Mountain Christmas, part of the Disney Sunday movie? I don't know. Huh. <laughs> Please, the whole movie in its entirety is on there. Smoky Mountain Christmas, do it. No. <laughs> I can guarantee you I'm not watching that on YouTube. What is Christmas of Many Colors? What is that? That was her. That was the movie this year. Wow. And then Code of Many Colors was last year. Really? Yeah. Where It's about Dolly Parton. Oh, wow. There's like a little girl that plays her. And, yeah. And then uh, <laughs> Dolly Parton shows up as a prostitute. Yeah. <laughs> at some point, like she plays a prostitute. That's fitting. Yeah. That's fitting. She's done that several times in her career. Yeah, really? Oh, yeah. Best little whorehouse House in Texas. Texas. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Um... I saw Lee Majors in a show this week. What's that? The season finale of Ash vs. Evil Dead. Oh, he was in that, yeah. Mm-hmm. He's playing Ash's father. Yeah. How was that show? How did it wrap up? Uh, is strong. That a, is that a series finale, you think? Oh, no, 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 no. Really? It's doing pretty well? Yeah, because it leaves it open. To, nice. They, there was time traveling. Really? Everybody's doing time That's traveling. That's the thing now. They time traveled back to before Ash visited the cabin in the first movie. Oh, really? To do de- to try to destroy the Book of the Dead. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. John yeah. Ritter is in <laughs> Smoky Mountain Christmas. Wow. He's a judge. I find you guilty <laughs> of being corny. <laughs> I'll allow it. Oh, man. What if he had that accent? What's that? Th- that's John Ritter's accent. <laughs> in Smoky Mountain Christmas. Uh, yeah, directed by Henry Winkler. That's, 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 that's quality stuff right that's there. That's icons. Lee Majors, the six million dollar man. Yeah, uh, I thought Henry Winkler was older. He's only seventy one. Well, that's older, but I thought to me he's been old for a while. He's old enough to tell you about a refinancing loan. That's true. Yeah, uh, home mortgage. Yeah, right. What what is that called? Uh, is that a? Where you, t- you basically you sell your house before that, you die. What's Colonial Pen? Is that him? No, that's insurance. Who does Colonial Pen? That's Alex Trebek. That's who it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm glad you have a new Christmas tradition now. I do. Yeah. It's not a good movie. It's not good at all. I could have told you that. Christmas Vacation is my movie every year. Is that the one you that's, go to? Yeah, that's my What about one. Christmas Story? It's good. It's just, it, that's good. I mean, you can find that every year on TBS over and over and over again. What about White Christmas? Uh, Bing not, Crosby, Danny Kane? Yeah. Not too big a fan of that. It's all right-ish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah, Christmas Vacation all day, every day. Uh, I do like Christmas Vacation. Uh-huh. Uh, I like Christmas Story. Yeah, it's I good. Like that one. Just, it's a classic. But yeah. It's a Wonderful Life. My wife hates it. It's a Wonderful Life. Really? Oh, yeah, we talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. I never get to watch it. Huh. <laughs> Unless I watch it alone. Which I guess that's a good movie to watch alone. Yeah. Because it makes yeah. you reflect on your life. That's what I hear. And how wonderful it is. See, I don't want to see that. I hear it's kind of sad. Kind of sadly. It has a happy ending. Yeah. Whoa, 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 <laughs> Mr. Potter. Um, ComicBookResources.com uh-huh. uh, has released their list. Of the 15 worst actors cast in hero movies mm-hmm. and the characters they play. Okay. So I thought this would be a fun list to go through. Let's do it. Number 15, Topher Grace's Venom. That was terrible. Yeah, that was about Eddie Brock. Uh, number 14, Jennifer Garner as Electra. Yep, agreed. But to be fair, Electra's a bad character. Can we say that? 
Does she have to be bad? I think so. I haven't seen a good one yet. Uh, which do you prefer, the Electra with Jennifer Garner or the Electra from the Daredevil TV show? I guess TV show. Really? I guess. Both bad, though. Yeah, I guess I'd go with the TV show. Yeah. If I had to pick one. Mm-hmm. Uh, number 13, Alicia Silverstone is Batgirl. Mm-hmm. Yeah, agreed. I want to be Batgirl. <laughs> Uncle Alfred, can you make me a suit? Help me. Um, number 12, Vinnie Jones as the Juggernaut. Oh, wow. I forgot he did that. Was that X-Men 3? Yeah, Last Stand. Yeah. I'm the Juggernaut, bitch. <laughs> That was, that, was, that was a good line. Uh, it was a good line. Yeah. <laughs> Number 11, John Travolta as Howard Saint. Mm, yeah. In 2004 as Punisher. Punisher. Yeah. I thought he was he was a highlight in the movie. Yeah, but it was just, it was just John Travolta. It was uh, his character from Greece or even an older Pulp Fiction. <laughs> uh, he was meaner. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Not too much more than Pulp Fiction. Eh. Same character. Eh. <laughs> uh, he's no Mark Colley. Yeah. <laughs> I love that movie, though. <laughs> or Big Daddy Cool. Well, yeah, the big Russian. Uh, number 10, Holly Berry is Catwoman. Terrible. Terrible movie. <laughs> number 9, Dolph Lundgren as uh, the Punisher. These are, this is number 9? What's number 1? Two thousand. So was that Punisher Warzone? No, that was just Punisher. That was just Warzone Punisher. was later on with the uh, the older gentleman. Uh, number 8, Sylvester Stallone is Judge Dredd. Aw, oh, I like him in Judge Dredd. Come on. People just hate Stallone. They're haters. Number 7, Ben Affleck is Daredevil. Wasn't that bad. I think it was better than Lundgren. Uh, Dolph Lundgren is on Arrow this season. Really? Yeah, he's in the. Um, he's a Russian. Yeah. Oh, nice. Oddly enough. Nice. Because uh, you know the way they do it is each season you get some of the flashbacks from Oliver's time before he came back to yeah. Star City, and uh, he's in the flashbacks. Here. Really? Yeah. Like uh, the the season story, he's all kind of. Uh, Ollie's all mixed up with the Russian mob. Wow. So he's a rub- Russian mobster. He's really good. I didn't... Did I recently find out that he's like super smart? He's a, like an actual genius. Yeah. Certified genius. Yeah. And he's got... It's a bad rap for his acting, but he's been one of Rocky's main villains. He's been uh, Punisher. He's been He-Man. Pretty damn good... Uh, pretty good list there. Yeah. Pretty good filmography. He's Even if you don't like genius. it, he should be proud. Yeah. Certified I would love genius. to be a Rocky villain or a He-Man or, or a Punisher. That's awesome. Yeah. No? No? <laughs> Eh. Not so much. Eh. I mean, He-Man, when it was cool, like in his prime, he was He-Man. If he dies, he dies. Yeah. <laughs> uh, number six, Keanu Reeves as John Constantine. Mm-hmm. And number five, Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mr. Freeze. Ah, yeah, that's rough. That's a bad one. Cool party. <laughs> chill out. Take a chill pill. I think I made one of those. Kill up. the heroes. <laughs> He's hosting The Apprentice now. Oh, uh, that's what I hear. And our president. Will continue being the executive producer, of <laughs> apparently. Uh, number four, Matt Selinger is Captain America. Oh yeah, see, I've never seen that, but I've seen uh, glimpses. What did he do before that? Anything? What about after that? Anything? You know, <laughs> that's a that's a good point. Yeah. Number three, Nicholas Cage as Ghost Rider. Yeah, that was a that was a bad die job too, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. A lot of black. A lot of black. <laughs> uh, number two, George Clooney as Batman. Number two, George Clooney as Batman. That makes sense. That was a terrible Bruce Wayne. I think uh, I think Mr. Freeze was worse. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, maybe was... even Batgirl was worse. I think Freeze was the worst, the worst. Yeah, chill out. And number one from Comic Book Resources, the worst actor to play a a let bad me, character. Let me think about this. Okay, yeah. Villain or hero? Hero. <laughs> That's tough. Because the bad Captain America is gone, uh-huh. the bad Punisher is gone. Uh-huh. Can you give me a, a year, around what year this came out? Around uh, this would have been this was mid nineties. Mid nineties. Okay, I have no idea. I'm stumped. Shaquille O'Neal oh. is Steel. Man, which that, that character had nothing to do with the Steel comic book. But it was a DC movie, though, right? Yeah. But, I mean, when you watch it, yeah. it had nothing to do. <laughs> with, I mean, because in the comic book, that's a Superman. Right, yeah. It exa- still is a Superman. Yeah, yeah. Agreed. <sighs> I never saw that. I'll, I'll stand by that. Blue Chips, Kazam, uh, Best Steel. Shaquille O'Neal movie. I've never seen them. <laughs> I've never seen you them. Seen, I thought you were a big Shaq fan. I mean, yeah. I like his, his, his product placement back in the day. He had the Big Slam Pepsi. 
yeah. for big guys. I love the big slam. Yeah, the Shaquille O'Neal candy bar. I was all about that. And I love, love, love Shaq Fu. He's never delved into the, in the cinema. The old Shaq attack? Yeah. I love a big slam, the Shaq bar, and playing Kung, some Shaq Fu. Was Shaq in Space Jam at any point? No. No. Charles Barkley. Uh, was Barkley was, in there? Barkley was oh, in Sean there. Sean Bradley, the big tall guy. Yeah. Uh, Muggsy Carl Bro- Malone. Was it Carl Malone? I don't think Carl Malone. Michael Jordan, of course. Yeah. Larry Bird was a golfer. Oh, yeah. Remember Bill Murray calls him clear. <laughs> yeah. Hey, did we? was it on the show that you were reading me the the Larry Bird stuff? I think that, that was uh, Josh from Collection Connections. Oh, was that. Josh doing that? Yeah, yeah. I thought that was you. I don't think so. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm I think, sorry. I think, I'm pretty sure it was him. I thought you were reading like the Larry Bird put downs. <laughs> no. <laughs> well. The Larry Bird put downs. If you're looking for a fun game. Yeah. Uh, to uh, to to play around the table this holiday season, uh, Google trash talking Larry Bird. No, it was our friend Adam Butcher, the artist. Oh, that's who. Yeah, yep. that's who it was. That's who it was. I was close. Yeah, it was an Adam. It was in the. <laughs> those are fantastic. Yeah, those are good. Like the things Larry Bird would say. Yeah. To some of the competitors on the basketball court. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we mentioned Batman, and we promised on the last show we talk about this. Uh, ben Affleck says he's in no hurry to finish his script for the solo Batman movie. Why not? Uh, in a New York Times interview, he also spoke about why he decided to don the cape and cowl. He referenced the disappointment with the 2003 Daredevil as a major reason. Part of it, and this is quote, part of it was I wanted uh, for once to get one of these movies and do it right, to do a good version. I hate Daredevil so much. Really? It frustrated me, Affleck said. The Netflix shows d- does really cool stuff. I feel like that was there for us to do with that character, and we never did that kind of stuff. I wanted to do one of those movies and sort of get it right. In other Batman news, weird. One of your favorite actors, yeah, Joe Man- Manganiello. Yeah, is that it? Yeah, yeah, Manganiello. Now it seems like I'm not pronouncing one of the syllables. Some people say maybe more Italian Manganiello, but Manja is fast and works as well. Manja or Manganiello, whichever. Manganiello. Joe Manganiello. That works, or Manganiello. I, quickly, Italian is Manganiello, but if you break it down, it's Manganiello. Yeah. Joe Manganiello, who portrays Deathstroke in the next uh, Batman movie, says that is that official? Be, well, I didn't know that. Yeah, he's Deathstroke. How did I miss that? Because he was up and running for, to be Bruce Wayne for a while. Yeah. Wow. Man, he's going to be uh, Deathstroke. Huh. Uh, he says they start shooting in uh, 2017. Really? Next year. Pee Wee Herman's best friend. <laughs> he was so sad. He was <laughs> that his friend Pee Wee didn't make it to his party. I enjoyed that movie. Yeah. It's Pee Wee. I mean, it was fun. It's Pee Wee. Hey, by the way, Pee Wee's Christmas special, Pee Wee's Playhouse Christmas special is on Netflix. Really? Yeah. yeah. Did you find some Larry Bird, Larry Bird Burns? Larry Bird. Yeah, I did. But they're more of like things uh, he said to certain people. But well, there's a whole list somewhere I'm going to find. Okay. Yeah. Maybe something so, to look forward to in season seven. Yeah, maybe it's a season season seven teaser. Maybe it'll be an ongoing story arc in season yeah, seven. That's true. Ooh, Larry, this week in Larry Bird. <laughs> uh, and finally, some Marvel news. Uh, set photos from the Defenders on Netflix has been released. Yeah. It's exciting. Really? Uh, Matt Murdock hanging uh-huh. out with Jessica Jones. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, also, uh, Joe Quesada will direct the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. spinoff Slingshot. The mini digital series will be a prequel to season four. Uh-huh. It actually starts this month. Really? This month. Joe Quesada is directing every episode. Uh, they're going to be short. It's a short series that you can only see at abc.com. So it's part of the Marvel... Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. universe, uh-huh. but it is a uh, digital series that's only going to be online. Huh. Um, and finally, Marvel's Inhumans will debut on ABC next fall. It's going to be a TV show. And we talked about this, I think, a little bit last week. The first two episodes are being shot in IMAX, mm-hmm. and they're going to premiere as a special IMAX event. That's before, a big deal. Before the show That's a big on. draw, because I want to go see that in theaters. as like almost a movie event, and then continue that in the, uh, the show. Mm-hmm. That's pretty smart. Yeah. So I'll, I'll be there. Pretty smart. And and uh, yeah, I've liked what they've done with uh, yeah. Agents of Shield. Yeah, I told I hear it's getting better. Um, Picking up a little bit. I wonder if they'll ever bring back Agent Carter. That last yeah. season, I mean, they're showing like tonight three episodes of Agent Carter back to back yeah. to back, just because we want to get this done. Well, that's just eh. yeah. So I know but, some but people what, are fans, but it's, it's it's a tough sell. What sucks is that last season, like the second season of Agent Carter, was yeah. actually better than the first season. Yeah. And it was a much better story with the, the the whole dark matter and everything. Oh, really? That was the whole story plot. That was the discovery of dark matter. Uh-huh. So basically you've got this TV show on ABC, Agent Carter, tying into Thor the Dark World. That is crazy. Basically. 
Yeah. It's pretty cool. The Titans are cool. Yeah, I enjoy it. You know, I'm currently in in Hawaii right now. Yeah, you are. Weird, huh? You're either loving it, yeah. or you've discovered you're allergic to everything there. <laughs> that would be terrible. You're swelled up like Martin see, Short. You see the Pacific Ocean for once. It's cool. Yeah. That yeah. was the first ocean I ever saw. Oh, really? Wow. I saw the Pacific before I saw the Atlantic. Wow. Mm-hmm. Huh. Uh, well, here we go. Yeah. We've got about three minutes left. It's the sign off of the year. In the 2016 episodes. Um, Any thoughts on 2016? Uh, it was terrible. <laughs> for the most part. I mean, yeah, the, the whole... I'm with you. Uh, the whole concept of, uh, you know, we've talked about it for a while now, but the, the presidential races are just... It's just, it was a madhouse kookiness, depending... I mean, no matter what side you were on, we have to admit that was crazy. The political view of 2016 was insane, right? Yes, it was. Yeah. And it's not getting any better. Uh-huh. I mean, just this week, you got Kanye West going to Trump Tower to yeah. with the president-elect yeah. Donald That's J. Insane. Trump. Yeah, yeah. Say as, that sentence again. As the CIA and, and, and the FBI are uh-huh. saying, oh, hey, you know, uh, Russia, uh, all those hacks <laughs> they were doing for Donald Trump. Right, yeah. But some allegedly. Of, some of my favorite celebrities died this year. That was terrible. David Bowie. Yeah. Prince. Alan Thicke. Yeah. Terrible stuff. Bad things happened. Merle Haggard. Yeah. 2016 was not good for those people. B. Arthur. Mm-hmm. Was that B. Arthur this no. I don't think so, yeah. No. I'm just making it up. Way to play it down for B. Thanks a lot. <laughs> I don't remember when she died. Yeah. But I know she's dead. Yeah. Dead or alive, B. Arthur. Dead. <laughs> um. Where there's been th- some good stuff, too. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, I'm in Hawaii right now because I got married. That's awesome. <laughs> You're kind of flip flopping on that one. Yeah. <laughs> you know, let's. Awesome's a big word to start throwing around. We probably need to wait till we're at least three, four months in before we start saying it was awesome. Feel that a little bit? Yeah. 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 yeah you know. Uh, you went to Disney World. That's awesome, right? Uh, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it's true. You never know. I never know. I don't know what could happen. Like the casino. World. Not every trip can be awesome. I could have <laughs> got mugged. Yeah. By. Yeah. Chippendale. Yeah. You could be that one guy that they, they take out and pronounce dead outside of the gates. That could be me right yeah. now. <laughs> that's true. I could be dead as wow. you hear this. Yeah. You're not, we we, we both, both could be. That's true. It's creepy. It's possible. Oh, good Lord. Well, if you if you are dead right yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. It's my last episode. on. <laughs> it's this being your last This episode. is the season finale of uh, season six. <laughs> yes. This is the big uh, cliffhanger. So, uh, yeah, replace me. <laughs> and you can replace me. Yeah. <laughs> Dang it. I mean, I feel like if this is the season seven cliffhanger, one of us has to die. You think so? Well, it's the season six cliffhanger seven. Right, but yeah. you don't find out who it is until the beginning of season seven. That's true. Yeah. That means we have to die at the end of this episode. Uh-huh. Just, and then it cuts. You don't know who it is until later on. <laughs> Eeny, meeny, <laughs> Right. Uh, which, by the way, uh, The Walking Dead was really good this past week. That's what I hear, but I saw the ratings. Yeah, but they're up. Uh, yeah, I mean, it said, <laughs> it said second lowest uh, mid-season... Whatever, since In season seven two. seven years? Since season two, yeah. yeah. Season two. Yeah. Uh, but it was really good. Yeah. It was a really good episode. I, can, I, like, uh, I like the shaved uh, shaved Negan oh, in the shaved? comic books. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well. I guess that's it. I guess that is it. Anything that's else you want to? I think that's about it. Any uh, advice all, you want to throw out there? all of 2016. Any New Year's resolutions? No. No, I'm good. Any promise no <laughs> like i don't know i've talked about it it Anything was coming down the pipe it was uh it hasn't happened yet in real life but as far as this recording goes when you hear this it's already happened that was an emotional roller coaster of a week had uh the star wars rogue one release had a wedding and i quit my job of 12 years mm-hmm. all within like three days that happened that's a lot for a man how do you think that's gonna fare out in the long run i think very good for all three i think we'll enjoy star wars <laughs> I think Star Wars is going to be good. I think it's about it, yeah. yeah. Hey, one third is not yeah, no, as much to ask for, no, right? No, as Meatloaf says, at least two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> I, need, I need two out of three of those. <laughs> uh, do check us out yeah. at facebook.com slash Adam and JP. Uh-huh. Also Adam on and, Twitter. Yeah, at Adam and JP. Check that out on Instagram. Uh, not Vine anymore. That's another death of 2016. Vine went down. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> In a blaze of glory. <laughs> it did. It did. And, uh, yes, check out our social media. And if you are interested in working with the Adam and JP show in 2017, email me directly, JP, at Adam and JP. I'll be looking at those over the next couple of weeks. Um, we're not back, really, until uh, that first week in January. I guess January 6th. 6th, yeah. But we do have a couple of episodes that were recorded at the Grand Old Game Room Expo. Yeah. Not really episodes, but... Some actual audio for, like, uh, the panels and things panels that happened Some panels that there. we were on. Yeah. So we'll have those coming out between now and... And the 6th of January. Mm-hmm. And who knows? Because somehow, 
we got to get a Star Wars review. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'll let you type it out, and I'll read your review. <laughs> it's the big type out, yeah. Just read it aloud. That would be awesome. That's pretty funny. It may have to happen. Uh, I'm Jay Patrick. That's Adam. <laughs> this is the Adam and JB Show. Face Sealer. This has been a production of the Adam and JP family of On Demand Talk Radio. AdamandJP.com Right now. This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network, your station for all things geek, classic, current, and beyond. Be part of the crew at ESONetwork.com.